everybody, Dr. Diane here answering a question about mold and is mold in your home basically causing a lot of health problems? The answer to this is it depends. Some people are not reactive to mold and there's a huge difference, understand, between mold allergy and mold toxins. I've talked about this on this channel before. Mold allergies, remember, are where somebody has an allergic response to, response to mold, which means it's gonna be like allergy symptoms. It's gonna be our classic itchy eyes, runny nose, a little bit of headaches, just like you have hay fever or something else like that, right? So they're allergic related symptoms. Now, some people are, are allergic to mold, absolutely. Other people are not allergic to mold, but they could still have mold illness. What's happening there is we have a genetic predisposition for these individuals to not be able to detox the toxins from mold. So in this scenario, what happens is these individuals that are genetically susceptible breathe in the toxins from mold. Their immune system does not recognize them. When the immune system does not recognize them, they, it can't remove them and they build up in the body. When they build up in the body, they cause a wide variety of symptoms depending upon how they affect the individual. We see that these mold toxins can cross the brain. They can cause nerve cells to die. There's relationships with neurological disease, with dementia and these mold toxins. There's relationships with these toxins to so start autoimmune diseases such as rheumatoid arthritis or lupus. Right, there's relationship to these toxins and fibromyalgia. So this is why these toxins are not always looked for is because it's not like a disease where it's gonna look largely the same in everybody. It just depends upon the mold, the particular mold toxin, your particular genetics, your combination of genetics, exposures, as well as how many other things and imbalances you have in your body at the time you're ill. So this is gonna look very, very, very different. I really, really think that this is one of the most under-talked about situations that, that is happening in our medical community. I cannot tell you how many sick people I have seen that get well and talk to their apartment complexes or talk to their builder who had built their house and these apartment complexes and these builders are basically like, well, there's nothing we can do about it even though they made a mistake causing water damage, even though there was some problem in the soil, this is happening all the time. And so it's really important right now that we are taking responsibility, that we are understanding our health and understanding the impacts of mold and understanding how important it is to get this out if we are in the people that are sensitive. If you're somebody that is not sensitive, you have mold in your house and you're not reactive and you feel great and your health is good and you don't have any symptoms, you're probably one of the lucky people that this does not affect. This is also why some people can be in a house and feel awesome, and other people can be in the house and feel horrible, right? So we don't know until we test. So you can look, you can test your house. You can also look for tests that are like urinary mycotoxin tests, right? Where they are actually looking to see if the toxins are built up inside of you in a pathologic level, in a level that's too high for your body to be able to tolerate. So super, super essential to consider that, especially if you do not know what is wrong with you. I wanna be very clear that even though I mentioned those disease processes, this is not to say that these disease processes are always caused by mold. Absolutely not. With any disease process in the body, there's multiple factors. Sometimes there's one cause, sometimes there's another. Sometimes the cause is unknown, but we do see that there are there are relationships in research and in clinic with these disease processes I've mentioned and mold. Headaches and migraines are also in there, by the way. Chronic fatigue syndrome is also in there. So we want to really consider this. And if we're having a lot of these symptoms or symptoms of unknown origin, that we rule out mold and mold in our home as being a problem. And just because you live in a climate, I am in Colorado, a very, very dry part of the United States. And here in Colorado, I cannot tell you how many homes test for mold, right? How many of my clients look at eight to 10 houses before they move, before they buy a place, before they find a mold-free place? It is everywhere. 
And if you're in the genetic population that is sensitive to it and you have symptoms like I'm talking about, we absolutely need to consider this as something that could be really deeply affecting your health. I hope this has been helpful. Please do subscribe to the channel. Please do leave your questions in the comments. It does help me think about other information to curate to help you guys. I'll see you in another video.